Blue Plate Special Going out for a restaurant meal has been a part of Saskatoon's history almost since its inception. Although the Temperance Society forbade alcohol, dining out has long been a Saskatoon tradition. The Chinese, Greek, and ethnic communities started eating establishments early on. In fact, Saskatoon had a Chinese restaurant as early as 1902. Over the years, Saskatoon has been reputed to have one of the highest number of restaurants per capita in Canada. The Goose Lake Line was the rail line which ran from Saskatoon to Calgary. The first tracks to the Goose Lake country of Delisle, Tessier, and Rosetown were laid in 1907, reaching Kindersley in 1908. Engineers and laborers on the construction trains needed to be fed. These cafe cars helped feed the work gangs as they lay track on the flat prairies. The Albert of Albert's Café was like the Albert Hughes. Hughes was S.B. Dale's original partner when they opened the first Albert's Café at 112 20th Street East in 1909. In 1912, Dale would pay $75,000 for the half interest owned by Hughes and own the entire business. There were soon three Albert's Cafés, with restaurants on 1st Avenue, 2nd Avenue, and 3rd Avenue. The restaurant served short orders, regular meals, and sold ice cream, cigars, candies, and fruit. When the King Edward Hotel first opened, its dining room was one of the largest in the city, having a seating capacity for 60. By 1914, renovations had increased the seating to 80 guests. This circa 1912 view shows the dining room decorated for Christmas. It was described as one of the most inviting and attractive in the city of Saskatoon, where waitresses clad in sanitary immaculate garments flit about the guests who crowd this popular room three times every day. H. Kelly O'Brien opened the Rex Café at 258 2nd Avenue South in 1915. Previously, he had operated the Olympia Café on 20th Street East near the Phoenix Building when he first came to Saskatoon in 1910. O'Brien, his brother Stanley, and other family members would operate the Rex until 1919 when it became a Chinese café called The Union. Kelly O'Brien's involvement in the restaurant business stopped in 1919 when he joined the Canadian Northern Railway. Only one lone customer is visible in this interior view of the Rex Café at 258 2nd Avenue South, although the hanging coat suggests the other booths were occupied. The Rex Café was advertised as the home of Kelly's Coffee. Indeed, Kelly O'Brien operated a horse-drawn mobile coffee wagon he called the Coffee Cart. He would decorate the wagon and drive it in the Traveler's Day Parade. An unidentified Saskatoon banquet room with hardwood floors, table set with linens, and chairs. The location of this dining room remains unknown. It may have been the Palm Room, located in Campbell's Cafe next to the King George Hotel. The Palm Room was a popular dance and banquet hall. With its sign stating, nothing in this store over 15 cents, the soda fountain at Woolworth's offered a wealth of temptation to the shopper. Root beer and orange crush were 5 cents, Sundays only 10 cents. The F.W. Woolworth Company had come to Saskatoon in 1914. In 1929, a new 5, 10, 15-cent store opened at 224 21st Street East, complete with a gleaming soda fountain ready to serve up a palm dairy ice cream soda after a 5 and 10 shopping spree. The chocolate shop at 167 2nd Avenue South opened on May 24, 1922. At the time, owner Gus Gulf boasted they were the finest ice cream and tea rooms in Western Canada. 
called the Studio of Confections, the chocolate shop sold chocolates, ice cream, and lunches. A novelty feature was the fact that all foods were cooked by electricity. The chocolate shop was the last of Gustav A. Golf's restaurant ventures. Golf had come to Saskatoon in 1910 and opened the Royal Confectionery on 20th Street East. The Electric Bakery on 21st Street East and Tea Rooms on 2nd Avenue South were other golf establishments. The golf name continues to be a part of the Saskatoon restaurant scene. Staff in the Besra Hotel Kitchen, cooking at Stowe's in 1949. Under the supervision of Chef Guillaume Schmitz, the kitchens of the Bisbury Hotel could prepare some 1,500 meals a day during convention period. The kitchen army included a night chef, second cook, garde manger, swingman, fry cook, roast cook, butcher, vegetable cook, vegetable boy, fireman, pot washer, staff cook, head still room girl, pastry chef, baker, assistant pastry chef, and pastry pot washer. The Besra Hotel's original cafeteria was located on the main floor to the left of the entrance. Colored variegated tile walls, chromium nickel chairs with red leather seats, and tables with black formica tops and silver trim were the latest in modern design in 1935. The cafeteria offered quick service and meals from 25 cents to 40 cents every day of the week except Sunday. In 1962, the old tiling was removed and the ca cafeteria was modernized. Enjoy delicious, skillfully prepared food, attractively served in surroundings reminiscent of picturesque Algiers. The Algerian Room, located on the third floor of the Eaton Store at 3rd Avenue and 21st Street, featured soft carpeting, mellow lights, and tastefully appointed tables when the store opened in 1928. At the time of this photograph, the tables had been replaced by a lunch counter. Harry Comerford, Pauline Schmidt, Stella Mack, and two unidentified friends stand in front of the Quick Lunch at 330 20th Street West. Located next to the Roxy Theatre, where Pauline Schmidt worked as a cashier, the restaurant opened in 1932. Jack Mack, Stella's husband, ran the restaurant with his wife from 1934 until 1937. By 1939, Quick Lunch disappeared to be replaced by another restaurant. Second Avenue in the 1930s was home to probably nine or ten restaurants within two and a half blocks. The Golden Gate Cafe and Confectionery at 145 Second Avenue North, in addition to dinner and candies, offered daily teacup readings courtesy of Madame Thwaite. Campbell's Cafe and Palm Room, located next to the King George Hotel at 151 Second Avenue North, was opened in 1929 by Harry Jones and James Campbell. It was described as the Banquet Hall of Saskatoon. The flickering red robin on the neon sign at 834 Broadway Avenue welcomed everyone from farmers to students to sisters from St. Joseph's School, all customers at the Red Robin Cafe. John Heitman and Raymond Henderson had originally opened the Red Robin Fruit Store and Cafe in 1929. Heitman would operate the cafe until 1951 when it was sold. The restaurant closed in 1965 and the building was demolished in September of that year. At a serviceman's canteen in wartime Saskatoon, Friends Jean McLeod and Belle Bowers take a break from their jobs as stenographers to enjoy a meal. Their volunteer waiter is Steve McKechn, then mayor of Saskatoon. The recruiting poster behind them states, women are urgently needed. Such fundraisers were a major part of the war effort. 
This one may have taken place in the old Canadian National Railway Station. Max Kolpak cooked steak at the grill of the Ritz Hotel and Café at 118 21st Street East. William Gichos and his brother bought the hotel and lunch counter in 1931. Bill once told his daughter that he won the Ritz in a card game. When Bill died in 1949, his wife Effie took over the operation, rebuilding the café area. Effie Gichos ran the place until her death in 1984. The day of her funeral, according to her daughter, was the only time in all that time the café was ever closed. The Shasta Café at 213 2nd Avenue South was another of Saskatoon's Greek-owned restaurants. Ted Gardner opened the restaurant in the D.C. block in 1940, only to have it damaged in the fire of December 1942. Ted Gardner would manage the restaurant until 1950, when Joe Gardner became manager. During its history, it was associated with the Saskatoon Blackhawks baseball team. When Mike Getter returned to Saskatoon from serving in World War II, he and his wife Anne opened the Veterans Café at 301 20 Street West, where Anne had previously operated the Silex Café. In 1948, they would move to the new corner building at 343 20th Street West. They would own and operate the Veterans Cafe from 1945 to 1962, when the restaurant was sold and Mike became chef at the Dundurn Army Camp. By 1965, the Veterans Cafe was no more. The lunch counter at Bell's Green and White Service at Cumberland and College Drive was a favorite hangout for university students. Elmer Bell, a graduate in pharmacy from the University of Saskatchewan, had originally opened this meeting place, which is not only very reasonable, but said to put up a pretty good meal. This was pretty important to those on a student budget. The restaurant Len Pepper and S. Pappas opened at 122nd Avenue North in 1937 was originally called the Modern Delicatessen. Later it would be known as the Modern Del Lunch, and finally the Del. Changes in decor accompanied the changes in name. The opening of the Pioneer Room in 1961 brought with it the addition of Gentleman Jim Charglow broiled steaks to the menu. Changes in ownership in 1974 saw the end of the Dell. The original Commodore Café was located on 21st Street East. Steve Likos reopened the café at a new location at 108 2nd Avenue North under the name the New Commodore Café. From this home base, Steve and son Spiro Likos were great boosters of sport, especially baseball. The Commodore Café was a favorite place for players to come to eat. We'll meet you at Spiro's meant the Commodore Café. In August 1955, passengers in the new Saskatoon Airport Terminal could have a cup of coffee or a meal while waiting for their flight. The new facility boasted a 24-stool coffee shop and 40-seat restaurant and came with a fully equipped kitchen. A window in the restaurant overlooked the runway, giving customers a view of incoming and departing flights. You could dine and dance at the Marigold Shop Cafe at 255 3rd Avenue South in 1941. That was the year W and Tape and Jimmy Woo opened an extension to the popular restaurant. By 1987, the marigold has disappeared from the Saskatoon restaurant scene. Everyone loves a buffet. The banquet room in the marigold restaurant was a popular location for businessmen lunches and service clubs meetings.
When Jack Crones opened J.D.'s restaurant on an 8th Street East in 1954, he had to haul his own water to supply the restaurant. From its modest beginnings as a roadhouse-type cafe with curb service, the restaurant would expand in 1964 to include a large banquet room, smaller dining room, and a cocktail lounge, which at the time was the only such room on the east side of the river. At the Dog and Suds drive-in restaurant on 8th Street, you could turn on your car lights and a car hop would come to take your order. In 1958, Peter Golf had flown to Champaign, Illinois to acquire the Canadian rights to the Dog and Suds franchise. The first drive-in was at 2910 8th Street East. At one time, you could get the world's creamiest root beer and a hot dog on 8th Street, on Avenue A North, and on 22nd Street. Located in the heart of Chinatown, the Golden Dragon at 336 Avenue C South was a fixture on the Chinese restaurant scene. Opened in 1958 by Bing Lam Dare and later partnered with Dare W. Dick, the Golden Dragon to many Saskatoon residents signified Chinese food. Customers could savour their chop suey and sweet and sour in either the Lantern or Dragon rooms or request delivery service. A partnership between Peter Ponticus, Peter Besves, and James Cosmos resulted in the construction and operation of the Suburban Restaurant, located north on Avenue A on Highway 11. In addition to a dining and coffee room, the restaurant was popular for banquets, weddings, and private parties. A spectacular fire in 1973 destroyed the restaurant. In 1954, when Joe Young decided to serve Colonel Harlan Sanders' original recipe for chicken at his El Rancho drive-in restaurant on 8th Street, it was the only the second Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise in Canada. The original deal was based on a handshake between the Colonel and Joe Young. Joe Young would become the driving force of KFC in Saskatchewan and Canada. His Saskatoon-based company was inducted into the Saskatchewan Business Hall of Fame in 2000. We hope you have enjoyed this virtual adaptation of Blue Pate Special. The original show was held from February 8th to March 11th, 2005, and curated by Ron Jaremko with the assistance of Local History staff. We invite you to visit Local History the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.